you know, Third Rock, we always try to grapple with the big themes. This time, we're answering the question, why are there so many beautiful women in the world? Turns out they're Venusians trying to take over. The episode starts uh, with every normal, schlumpy, nebbishy guy in Rutherford, Ohio, being surrounded and fawned over by these beautiful, exquisite creatures. We have three wonderful women from the world of fashion and modeling. Cindy Crawford. Angie Everhart. Irina Pantaeva. We knew that once we had Cindy Crawford that, uh, you know, we could get uh, other high-profile models falling in place. It is chock full of probably the most beautiful women on earth. It's always nice to have a, a, a ton of beautiful women around. I mean, I'm, I'm not, you know, what, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> you know? Can somebody please explain to me why Rutherford, Ohio is suddenly brimming over with beautiful women just dying to date losers? <laughs> well, I'm betting it has something to do with El Nino. <laughs> And then I decide to check it out, and I find out that they are actually Venusians. They come to Earth, and every man they meet will give them anything they want. Look what I bought for Chloe. Ooh, How nice. much did that cost? Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars? Oh, really? A month for the next 16 years. They're very high maintenance. <laughs> They've come to drain the economy, and uh, uh, so all the guys uh, in Rutherford, Ohio, are, are uh, taking them out and uh, spending tons of cash on them, and they're just going to suck all the cash up and leave. And it takes us uh, four aliens, you know, the Third Rock family, to find out what they're really about. Holy cow! We weren't just dating leggy babes! We were dating leggy babes from beyond. I am captured by them and made into one of them. <gasps> I get totally made over, and basically Sally defines being made over as torture. Lieutenant's Law, I don't know how long I've been here. I don't know how long they're going to keep me. I don't know what I know anymore. On the plus side, my skin looks gray. <laughs> I become a supermodel, basically. <gasps> I do a catwalk. And then uh, the, the fellas, the male aliens, uh, have to come and, and save me. And the Earth as well. We gotta save Earth, and we gotta save Sally! Let's go! Wait! What if we run into one of those cunning, manipulative women? You're right. Everyone grab a comb and a dinner jacket! Let's go! <laughs> This is uh, the Venusian lair, and they uh, they built it as the sort of the master control room for uh, the Venusians. We are uh, actually in the basement of um, Qualcomm Stadium during the Super Bowl. Super Bowl, supermodels. Do you see where we're going with this? Just wait till you see how three people sneak into the Super Bowl with only two tickets. We have a very ugly baby. <laughs> this was something that we just cooked up on the spot. And it's, it may be the funniest shtick we've worked out yet. Get me out of this thing. <laughs> Harry, push, push! The writers and the producers have hit such a great stride with combining this incredible farcical physical comedy with actually a bit of some highbrow wit. It's all very uh, improvisatory. The writers are always in on the act. You know, you just keep brainstorming all these things. What if this character becomes a lounge singer and then that character, you know, it's, it's just be endless possibilities. That's the nice thing about being intergalactic travelers. We can go anywhere. Most of the episodes, uh, just gel. All the storylines really work together. One isn't necessarily stronger than the other. The structure really works. The creativity level is very, very high, along with the sort of lunacy level. I just think we keep getting better and better. I keep enjoying the shows more and more. It's like we keep on raising the pole. We have to jump higher. You know what? I think it's just uh, having fun. We always have fun, <laughs> but we're having extra special fun this time. <laughs> the Venusians have invaded and they're hot. So, uh, uh, if that's not enough to get a bunch of uh, beer-swilling guys to watch a little extra TV, then, uh, you know, it's the end of the world as we know it. Yes! My X-ray specs! Look out for him and of Rutherford. From now on, Dick Solomon no longer has to use his imagination. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry I didn't tell you about this sooner. But I just... <laughs>
Falling in love again, never wanted to. What am I to do? Can't help it. Sorry. <laughs> Dick, come on. Now, you know, we never take the big giant head seriously. He's always trying to nickel and dime us. Oh, yeah. You remember when he tried to sell me shh? <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was going to be you. <laughs> on the pill and it seems to be working for him. Okay, you lost me again. I'll call you when I'm back to my old... No, wait, let me go back. <laughs> One day, little Johnny Normal is on his paper route. The next day, he's holding up I don't... I screwed the line myself. So sorry. The big giant head looks forward to reading your comprehensive history of America... Your <laughs> mother. <laughs> You're gonna go there, get all ooey gooey, and you'll miss the transport. Oh, that is such a lie. Uh -huh. <laughs> Remember that Harry is a trans. Okay, there's no way I'm oh, sorry. Right. Let's... <laughs> is there anything else I should know? Yes, I care for you deeply, and I love you. I'm touched. Uh, uh, let's do it again. Okay. <laughs> no. No, this is not how it ends. This has been a long and difficult journey, and it will not, not end at you know, but... But if... <laughs> not the metal hammer. We want to knock him out, not kill him. Sorry. You're out of control. I know, which is why I've got to grab the horse by the balls. <laughs> Oh, yes, it's all right. Uh, Dick, are you absolutely sure you want to go back to the party? Absolutely. Okay, well then, bye. I don't know what my life is. <laughs> I got some good friends. They adore me. I know how to treat me. The word came down create a 3D episode. They all said, okay, if we have to do a 3D episode, let's break the mold. Let's, uh, let's do something like nobody ever did before. Jeez, that's astounding. All of our episodes deal with the aliens experiencing something for the first time. This time, they're experiencing dreams. Each of them extremely highly produced with uh, very sophisticated cinema techniques, special effects, and uh, scripted by Bonnie and Terry Turner and the writing staff. So they fold in beautifully with the rest of the story. Yeah! Terry and I have decided that since they were dreaming that it should have a very different look. It shouldn't be of this world in any form. So we decided to give it a very filmic look and you have to shoot bigger, different lighting and everything which only a big soundstage can give you. We're going after a complete eye-popping experience is what we're trying to do. We wanted to incorporate the 3D and the special effects into the show in such a way that they become part of the plot, that what happens within the segment spins the next scene out and then it is a reaction that starts the next segment which spins the plot again so that what you've got is kind of a really wild insane ride to the show i think it's special because it's it's unlike anything anyone has ever seen and literally will ever see i, I really think that that i can say knowing full well nothing like this has ever been tried on television before so when they actually explained exactly how it was going to go down and that it was all these different dreams and exactly what our dreams were, I just thought it sounded awesome. I think all of us feel this sense of we've been unleashed. This is vaudeville, it's slapstick, it's huge and it's not done on television anymore. Like no one ever like falls down and hurts themselves anymore on TV and like we do that all the time. Things are being said, but at the same time, it's damn funny, and people are leaping over the top with abandon. And um, it's fun to do, it's fun to watch. All of us felt that was some kind of high point when we created that. Life has been good to me. I'm singing and dancing to this great Randy Newman uh, song from Faust. 
And it's a Busby Berkeley style sort of uh, old MGM dance number. We're going to shoot uh, most of it in one shot. That's a cut. 27 takes was the final tally. In the pool, I had uh, 20 and 34. Life has been good to me. We're killing ourselves during this. I mean, we are so overextended, but we really sense that it's going to be worth it, that it'll be like nothing anybody's ever seen. A lot of people in, in uh, acting say less is more, and uh, Third Rock, more is more. So we like it big, we like it fast, and we like it fun, and we don't like to take it too seriously. Life work is fun, we like what we're doing, and when you walk into the studio in the morning to go to work, it's like walking into the playground. It's more fun than I've ever had. That's my girl. Mary, I'm an alien. That's wonderful! It is? Yes, because... I'm an alien too! Wow! It feels like being a kid again and just discovering acting and comedy and everything's big it's like the dancing is big you know we're mugging it up and uh it's 3d you know 3d for those of you at home what's so great about it is it's all fun people and it's the kind of job where you just can't wait to get to work every day it's just amazing those four little episodes Not a masterpiece, a perfect human being, not a strand of DNA out of place. He'll probably want to have my organs on a platter or something. <laughs> When you think you're out, this family push. <laughs> She's an Irish lady. Well, it certainly wasn't my idea. When you think you're out, this family poster. <laughs> Heads up, I'm coming into the room. <laughs> I can't sleep. I think I maybe should remember what my love. <laughs> <life. laughs> well, now you're talking crazy. Hey, shut up. You know what? Enough, you guys! It was my party. I'm calling the shots. We helped. Oh, we helped. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I threw the Tupperware party of the season. So I'm the one who decides... <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. I can't look at him. I'm gonna look down this way. <laughs> Tupperware party of the season. <laughs> yeah, the season. I'm the one who decides who gets what. 
I'll tell you the secret. You just pucker up vapor lock onto your boss's butt and hold on. <laughs> absolutely no independent thought required. In fact, it just gets in your way. I have no idea what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> you just pucker up vapor lock onto your boss's butt and hold on. Absolutely no independent... Oh, now. See, now. I choose physics. Oh, you know what they say, Dick. When life gets you lemons. I don't remember that. <laughs> That's a bunch of bull. Why did I have to choose physics? Well, you know what they say, Dick. When life gets you lemons. <laughs> God. <laughs> 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 I've been looking all over for the right guy, and... <laughs> you might as well be in Portugal. Because it's so far away. Uh, no, Nina, because Portugal is an ancient land of fascinating maritime... <laughs> so yes, it's so far away! Dick, Huff Hall is a landmark. It is over 100 years old. They put the ramp on the south side so it wouldn't... Ruin the, the scene. Dick Huff Hall is a landmark. It's over a hundred years old. <laughs> yes, it's so far away. Oh, Dick Huff Hall is a landmark. <laughs> How about you, Dick? Will there be ladies? There's a room full of drunken meter Jeez, Jesus. <laughs> how about you, Dick? Will there be ladies? Does a how does a room for high yaka? <laughs> how about you, Dick? Will there be ladies? How does a room full of drunken meter maids sound? Very promising. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anyone, but maybe Bibi does. Bibi Don? Bibi, baby. <laughs> I met her at the hobby shop. No, I didn't. <laughs> Dick Huff Hall is a. <laughs> Dick Huff Hall is. <laughs> One, two, three, go. <laughs> Dick Huff Hall is a landmark. He is home. <laughs> hey, you guys gotta try this electric ear swab. <laughs> I remind you that it was this fool who suggested that we use your pantyhose as a line of life. Where, where do we start? I've scheduled, I've scheduled you. <laughs> I've scheduled. Oh, crap, anyway. Okay. How about. Uh... I did nothing of the sort. Then what I. <laughs> Uh, no, l give us a good place to start. Yeah. Um, so you did take your physical? I did nothing of the sort. <laughs> I'm a genius. <laughs> Here, pack the mayonnaise. Right. Man, it's packed. <laughs> ah, look, it 
says the average American uses 4.1 pounds of butter a year. Orally? Uh, did you use a... Um... Oh, yeah, a three-pack. <laughs> Ribbed for her pleasure. <laughs> but I turned them inside out. <laughs> Ribbed for her pleasure. <laughs> but I turned them inside out. <laughs> Did you use a... Oh, yes, a three-pack. <laughs> Ribbed. <laughs> a three-pack. <laughs> Ribbed for her pleasure. <laughs> Take you shopping next week. Get you a pretty new dress. Would you like that? about our sex life so you can impress an old college chum. Yes. <laughs> and don't be afraid to embellish. Every time you're about to describe something, multiply by two first. Dick, why are you so insecure? You're fine in bed. Oh, okay, now, multiply by two. You're great in bed. Multiply by four. For me, basically, it's not what the show is about, but it's who, who's involved. And if it, if it has the potential for being fun, <laughs> then I'll be there. This has proved to be more fun than I could ever imagine. You are a stallion. The merest touch of your hand ignites an unquenchable inferno in my loins. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm the man at this table, and I insist on paying for dinner. Fine. Oh. <laughs> well, see. Mary, could I borrow $200? Dick, this is only $80. I know. I also want to buy a Cuisinart. I knew that uh, Bonnie and Terry Turner were doing this show. She called one night, and I said, well, how's the show going? And she said, well, um, that's why I'm calling. We had to uh, rewrite the part of the love interest for the high commander, and I was wondering if you would do it. Come on, Professor Solomon, teach me a lesson. <laughs> no. Okay. If you're not going to give it to me, I'm going to come over there and get it. Fine. Just make it quick. <laughs> I didn't know anything about the part, and I knew very little about the show except for the people who were involved in it. And without blinking, I said, well, of course I would. Oh. We have a family reunion this weekend. It sounds like it's going to be wonderful. You want to come? Oh, are you sure it's all right? Well, of course it's all right. Oh, Dick, it's family. Oh, no, I don't worry, that. Mary. I, I'm sure you'll find my family to be warm and nurturing. It won't bear any resemblance to the liquor-drenched orgy of hatred and recrimination that, that marks every Albright get-together. The character of Mary Albright has evolved into this, um, really fun person to play. Play nice. Oh, Mary's desperate for love. And she basically is looking for love in any place. She doesn't care where it is. All, all my life, I've, I've had this facade of the beautiful, tough, has-it-all lady. When deep inside, I'm 
I'm just a fat little girl who wants to be loved at all costs. <laughs> oh! I think that's the only re reason she's with Dick. <laughs> She recognizes the fact that he does have idiosyncrasies, but she is so messed up that, you know, no one could possibly be as screwed up as she is. He's an immature, loathsome, stupid man. God, I miss him. Come on, let's go out, get drunk, make fun of him. I don't feel like going out. Okay. Sit down. Big, fat, bumbling, oblivious, Pepe wearing mega idiot. Oh, thank you, Mary. I love you too. I think really their relationship is based primarily on sex. Oh. Daddy needs a kiss, kiss. I think Mary <laughs> believes in her mind that that Dick is a certain person, and Dick, of course, thinks of Mary as this idol of womanhood. Come on, admit it. You're a lonely school marm in a one-horse town when along comes a crazy cowpoke sniffing around your petticoat. Did Dick tell you about our gun smoke game? No. We don't have one. I think it's just purely a physical <laughs> relationship. <laughs> Let's just get naked. Dick! Lock the doors! <laughs> A lot of television shows are uh, ego-driven, where they have one star or a producer even will get involved in the ego business. And um, that sets a negative tone so that when you walk into the studio, you feel, oh, I have to, I have to make sure I stay in my place. Hello, Dick. Hello. <laughs> Here we step on people's toes left and right, and nobody minds. Nina collects those fuzzy buddy things. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, too. Well, you collect thimbles. Mary, you don't. Antique thimbles. <laughs> <laughs> You're both idiots. <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> Our speeches are filled with references and filled with all of this great, heady stuff that you have to listen to in order to understand. Dick, I can't believe you do this. Do what? Find somebody who has time for me, who's devoted to me? Birds gotta fly, Mary. <laughs> Fish gotta swim. Camels gotta carry water over long expanses of desert. It's farce, and uh, uh, there are a whole bunch of very dignified people walking around getting pies shoved in their face. And that can be understood in any language. Promise me one thing, Dick. The next time the world gets all topsy-turvy and I start acting crazy again, do me a favor, will you? Slap some sense into me. <laughs> Our basic purpose is to make people laugh and to do it in a way that's intelligent and, um, and fun, and I, th I think we succeed tremendously in doing that. <laughs> that's more tongue than I'm used to. I think that says it all. I don't know. <laughs> Immediate response mandatory. I don't know my lie. Harry, I'm done. You can bring the chair back in, okay? I could. What are you saying? I'm saying that I think that you share. <laughs> I'm done. You can bring the chair back in now. <laughs> All right, then I'll see you. Okay. Who's that? Alyssa. No. <laughs> no. Uh, Wrong line. <laughs> But you're angry! Nine! You're being chased by...
by a tiger. It's just about to catch you. All of a sudden, you see your boobs. Emergency. And we need to go to the Lapine County Fair and Dick lost the car's keys. <laughs> McDonald always says the truth hurts, but lies are <laughs> damn it. <laughs>